standard deviation is to try and figure out like the data that you collect, how much does that data differ from the mean or the average, okay? Meaning like if you have like a, the test average was an 80, the test average could be, could be an 80 because literally everybody scored an 80, or it could be an 80 because it has what typically happens, this bell-shaped curve where some people score really high, some people score really low, and then yeah, you get some 80s and, and you know, a right around and all that, but, uh, but most people are scoring around that average, around like the middle, okay? So standard deviation is basically trying to see how clumped up is the data or how spread apart is the data from that, uh, um, uh, from that average. So there you go. Um, so yeah, whenever we're looking at data and statistics, you want to see how much variation. So again, how much is that data changing from the average? And then um, we also want to look at sample size. So um, how confident you can be in your data depends on, well, how big is the sample size, right? Small sample size, you're not going to be as confident in your data. Bigger sample size, you're more confident in your data. Just real review, quick review of like your basic stats terms, mean, that's your average. Median, that's where if you line up all the values from like um, smallest to largest and then you like start crossing off till you get to the middle number, that's the median. Think of a highway, if you have a median of the highway, that's like separating the two ends of the highway that go one direction versus the other direction. Um, mode is the most common value in a data set. So um, again, you have a bunch of test scores, maybe the average is a 75, but like an 80 was the most commonly scored um, uh, 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 test score, meaning the mean and the mode sometimes are not the same, right? You could have most people getting a certain score, but that doesn't necessarily mean that's the actual average. Um, how you calculate the average is a lot simpler than what this formula makes it seem. You all know this. You want to find the test average. You're going to take everybody's score. You add them up, which is what this is trying to show and you divide by the number that you added up. Cool. All right. Um, example of the median, All right? Line up the numbers, and then you just start crossing off. Line up alphabetically, and you start crossing off until you get to the middle, which is six. OK. <laughs> yeah. There you go. And then mode, so median and mode happen to be the same here because there's two sixes, so six is the most common number. All good? All right, now then, standard deviation. So as I said, it's basically trying to see um, how far are you getting from the average here. So um, in statistics, they say uh, one standard deviation is equivalent to 68% of the values from the mean. Um, meaning if I, if I jump to this graph here, if you had a graph, this is your average, the, the, this very center of the bell curve. If you went um, uh, one standard deviation um, uh, wide, right? So like the width here from here to there is one standard deviation. You're saying 68% of the values, this is test scores, 68% of everybody who took the test scored within this range. If you go two standard deviations, you're saying that you are now at 95%, 95% of all the test scores, for example, fall between these two brackets that I just, I just circled there, okay? And then beyond two standard deviation, that's where you start getting to like the outlier territory, right? Where you start getting like the hundreds or like the fours or something, you know, I don't know, like the people who uh, you're like, well, what's going on here? How, how does that happen? Um, that kind of thing. Uh, let me make sure I said everything here. Yeah, so I said this at the beginning of class, the closer, the more clumped up the bell curve gets, the more it gets clumped up, the lower the standard, standard deviation is, where the more it spreads out, the higher it's going to be. Okay, cool. All right, um, now if you're going to calculate mean, well, I'm showing you how to find standard deviation. So here's your data I give you, and you're going to do something similar to this next class with the banana lab, and we're looking at uh, quiz scores from AP Biology. Here, you would have all your quiz scores. You would uh, first find the average, which, you know, add up all the quiz scores, 
divide by the number of, uh, of the quiz scores that you took. This right here is actually the standard deviation formula. This is on your formula sheet, which is good. You don't have to memorize this formula. Sometimes you'll see standard deviation shown like this with that symbol. Don't be confused by the different ways they show it. It could be an S, could be, anybody know what that's even called? Sigma. Sigma? Yeah, a sigma. Yes, it is. Yeah. yeah. Um, was there controversy? Is he? Yeah. Anyways. Um, Simi was like, "That's not a sigma." Um, okay. All right. Are then. You to the what's that? Are you? Were you referring to the E shape? Oh no no. I'm talking about uh, what I just drew. This. Oh, I have no idea. Oh okay. Yeah. Um, what's the difference between? Okay, so uh, I'll be back up. On this slide here, we just went over this part of the formula. Part of standard deviation is you need to find the mean. Okay? Um, and then if we go to the next slide, what you now do, now that you know your mean, you know that this is 87, you can then plug 87 here. This symbol here, this is the sigma symbol. This means summation. Uh, that one's also sigma. This one sigma? Yeah, They're both. They're both sigma? Yes. What are we doing here? Jeez. Hey, talk to Mr. Van Nye about this. We need a... Jeez. Seems like something he would come up with, you know? Like, just like some troll thing. You're like, what? Okay. Uh, so now what you're going to do is you're going to take all of these scores. And how this table is breaking up is saying, hey, you're going to... Summation says take all of your individual values. So X could be for our first number, our first measure number would be 96. Do 96 minus your average, 87. Square it, which is how they got 81. And then you'll combine it with, you'll do all of those calculations. So you do then your next value, 96 minus 87 squared. Let me, um, here, I'll do the calculation right here. So you would do, take your first value, 96 minus 87 squared, plus sum that with your next value, 96 minus 87 squared, plus, go to your third value, 92, 92 minus 87 squared. You kind of seeing where I'm going with this? Dot, dot, dot. Do that for all of these individual measured values. And then that's going to be the top part of this, uh, um, of this fraction in the radical. Then the bottom is n minus 1, where n is your sample size. So here our sample size is 10, so you'd have 10 minus 1. That is how you find standard deviation. It's not like the actual math isn't that hard. It's just very tedious, right? Because like... You have 20 values, you have to do like literally this whole top of the fraction, add them all up, you know, square it, add them all up, and then um, divide by this, and then do the square root of it. Let me let me keep moving on, and now you'll kind of see that's what they're trying to show you. Wait, and then you do the you take the the square root of it. Okay. Yeah. Are we okay with that? I don't want to I don't want to like belabor the point, boss. I don't want to like speed through this too fast. Okay. Um, so this slide, all they're trying to show is how they got how I got here. So same data, just now they're saying, hey, n, how you find n. They call it the de degrees of freedom, by the way. Degrees of freedom, take your n, your, your number of data values, and then minus that by one. Okay. Um, and then uh, putting it all together, right, doing all that math, you then get 7.79 which is your standard deviation. Um, I don't know why they just rounded that to eight. If you know, I'm, I'm open for that. Sig fig. I, yeah, I think it might be a sig fig thing. No, I'll get back to you on this. I don't think there's any shot the AP exam would be looking at sig figs on this. Like, I think they're, they're cool with 7.79. But uh, yeah, it's definitely a sig fig thing because you have like 90 right here and one. Okay, so then what does any of that mean? Okay, 
standard deviation we got here is 8. What does that mean? Okay, well, if the test average was uh, 87, one standard deviation would mean if you subtract 8 from the test score, and then if you add 8 to the test score, you're saying 68.3% of the data falls between 81 and 95. Okay, two standard deviations would say, hey, add um, two standard deviations, two eights, so that's 16, add 16 to your average, and subtract 16 from your average, and that would give you 95% of the test scores that everybody got. Between 71 and 103, yep. It is, good call. 79, 95. Okay, you got the math right there. That's, that's earning of candy later on. I'll get you, I got you, yep. So like, if you were like asked a question So on the unit one test, I'm not going to ask you like standard deviation, but you're going to, I'm going to give you data. So you're going to, you're going to have to calculate standard deviation for our class data. And then you're going to do a paired essay, an essay with your, with like a, a random partner where I'll give you some sample data and you'll just find the standard deviation from that data. Okay. So it won't really be like multiple choice questions quite like that. It'll just be like literally find the standard deviation. And I'm going to show you error bars here in a minute. You're going to add error bars to a graph. Yeah, how much um, does your data, uh, how, how much does data differ from the average? So like, if your data, because your average could be, the test average is an 87. It could be an 87 because everybody scored an 87, so your standard deviation is zero, or the test average could be an 87 because you have a lot of people scoring like higher and lower and they just average out to 87. So how spread apart is the data is standard deviation? It could be even simpler. All right. I, it's, first time I learned this is super confusing. It's, it's really not too bad. You just gotta really sit with that formula and let it bother you for a bit and then it's like, oh, it's really not so bad. Okay, moving on here. Um, so yeah, th this slide is really just trying to summarize it for you. So they have a different data set here. Um, so it's just another calculation of standard deviation. They found their standard deviation from this data was 1.82. So what they did is find the average and they went 1.82 to the right and then 1.82 to the left and then that right there is your, your one standard deviation. So again, 68% of all their data falls between those two brackets is the idea. That all good? You want to look at that example in a little more detail on your own, you can, but same same process that I did for the, 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 the quiz score example. Okay. Um, now then, we need to talk about um, uh, the standard error of the mean. It's a mouthful. Standard deviation. Let's say I give you an example where we have um, five mice, and this is the weights of all the mice. What exactly these, these are, the numbers, doesn't really matter so much. Say that's 4, 6, 12, right? Make up your numbers, whatever you want. That's how far apart their numbers are. This line right here, this would be the average of where these numbers are at. Okay, you pick what the numbers are. Uh, this line right here represents um, the standard deviation, right? So it's saying, um, uh, in this case, like, um, how much is this data spread out? Um, so 68.3% of the data they're saying would, would lie between um, here and here. And it's always okay. 68.3? Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, good, good question. One standard deviation is always 68.3. Sometimes they say 68%. Two standard deviations is always 95%. That's why you hear like a 95% confidence interval. That's what it's like pegged to is two standard deviations. All right, so then standard error of the mean, what's going on here is let's say I did multiple studies where I, I find the average for the mice. 
and multiple studies have different averages. Standard error of the mean is the average of all of those averages. Okay, so standard deviation is just the how spread apart is, is one average. Standard error of the mean is looking at if you had multiple averages and then you, um, uh, you then want to compare how do these averages line up with each other? How spread apart are those averages? You would then have the standard error of the mean here. Like you put all those averages on a number line. Standard error of the mean is looking at how far apart, how much these, these averages of the averages differ from each other. And that's kind of like a, a mouthful. Multiple studies, how much do, do, does, do all the different averages differ from each other? Whereas again, standard deviation just looks at one study, how much does, does the app does do the data in one study differ from each other? Standard of the mean is how much do all of those averages differ from each other across multiple studies? Mean of the means is what they call it. Okay. We don't really use this quite as much, um, not as important, but uh, it is technically a thing they want you to know for the AP exam. Okay. So putting it all together, standard deviation, one study, one data set, you get your average and then how spread apart is, is the data. Standard error of the means is you have multiple averages, how spread apart is that data for, for multiple of the averages. Okay. Standard error of the mean is like looking at, if you have multiple averages, each of these, these colored bars is an average you got from a study. How far apart do all of those averages in multiple studies line up? Whereas standard deviations looks at one study, how, how spread apart is that data? Oh, um, that's where this next slide comes in. So standard error of the mean, uh, another formula you're given, how you calculate that is you have your mean, you then have a standard deviation, and then your number. So this is using the, the same numbers from like that quiz example we did when we found standard deviation first. You do uh, put your, on top of the, the, the fraction, put your standard deviation, and then divide by um, the square root of your, uh, your sample size. So then standard error of the mean here would be uh, 2.5 plus or minus from the mean. So what that means is if you were to, if I were to do, if I were to like compare my quiz scores to multiple other AP bio teachers, our averages would vary plus or minus by 2.5. Okay, there's variation within my one average, but if I, if I want to see like how much would I expect if I get the same quiz and I, you know, I'm the same caliber of teacher as Ms. Murdoch or something, I would expect our averages to vary by 2.5, is the idea. Okay. Um, all right, now last thing we gotta talk about is error bars. So um, when you make a graph, like you make a bar graph here, you wanna know, hey, for group A, uh, their average is 10. Well, how confident am I that, it, that group A's average is actually 10? That's where standard deviation comes in on the graph where this represents one standard deviation. So this would be saying I am 68% sure, right, one standard deviation, that group A's average is between, let's call that 12.5 and say eight. Sometimes, like I talked to Mr. Van Nye, he was telling me a lot of times error bars are two standard deviations. So this could go up even higher if you wanna make this a 95% confidence interval. But, you know, Apparently that can vary depending on the graph. Like it's not like a set thing. It just depends on how, how big you want to show your error bars. That makes some sense. Um, there's a couple questions here. We're really kind of short on time. I'll let you answer those on your own. Uh, well, let's do it real quick. Which sample mean is a better estimate of its population, B or C? Um, you would say C because C has the smaller error bars. Because C is saying they are more confident that their, their, their actual average is right there, is at, let's call that 12. Whereas B is saying, hey, it could be 14, but like it could also be 17 or say 11. Good there. Last one, I've identified the two populations that are most likely to have statistically significant differences. Um, it would be the uh, populations with the biggest error bars. So A and B had the biggest error bars. 
So it's most likely that they're not going to be, again, as confident in their averages. Okay, here's a funny graph. Nice job today, everybody.